Welcome to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. Thank you for being with us today. We're talking about something very important, and I think it's important to all of us, especially in these times. The title of this show is going to be Fear is the Mind Killer. That is a quote from one of my favorite books by Frank Herbert, Dune. Many of you may remember Dune and have read it yourselves. We will be talking about that topic today with J.J. Joshua, who is an extraordinary coach, spiritual coach, and she, she is someone I have worked with personally. So I bring someone to you whose work I know and who I have to tell you has been absolutely life-changing for me. So we're going to be talking about fear today. Stay with us because it's something that comes up for all of us. And it's something I think we all can use great tools in order to cope with. So again, welcome to Change It Up Radio. And as you know, we are a show that is all about change. Our mission is either to spotlight change makers who are making the world a better place, or to bring you information, tools, processes, to help make change smoother and more productive in your own life. And that's actually, we'll be doing both of those things today. So please stay with us. I really think you're going to enjoy this show. Again, I wanna remind those of you who may be new to this show, you can get information about us, information about being a guest or a sponsor on this show. And you can listen to past episodes on changeituprradio.com. That's changeituprradio.com. Also, you may know that I am, in addition to the host of this show, I am a life transitions coach. I am an author and a speaker. And if you would like more information about my work, or getting a complimentary consult with me, or get the free gift that I have on my website, please go to paulashaw.com. That gift, by the way, is a list of 20 things to say and not to say to people in, in painful, difficult situations, because we all are a little bit stumped when it comes to knowing what to say when someone's going through hard times. So that, the, that list of what to say and not to say, and it's actual statements, sentences that are suggested, and that of course you can do a variation on in your own experience. You can get that at paulashaw.com. So as I mentioned, the theme today for this show, the title is Fear is the Mind Killer. And I'm gonna be talking to you from my heart in the next few minutes because the last few weeks of my life have created some situations in which I have really known fear firsthand. And I have experienced the mind killing <laughs> potential of fear. Now, just to set the stage for that a little better, I want to read a quote to you from Frank Herbert's book, Dune, which I was saying earlier was one of my favorite books as, my goodness, I don't even remember, but I'm pretty sure I was a young adult. It wasn't when I was a teenager, but it's an extraordinary, it actually was a whole series. Many of you may remember that. But this is a quote from Ben Gasseret, who was the major character in the story. He said, I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. I love that quote because first of all, those of you who have known fear when it was really difficult, when it was 
fear, like even terror, know how it destroys your mind, destroys your ability to think, destroys everything, right? You know, you can't focus, you can't plan, you can't even speak sometimes. And, and that is terrifying. So in my own experience in the last few weeks, I have dealt with an infestation of rats in my home. And I have to tell you, I don't know. My daughter said, maybe you lived through the bubonic plague in a past life. I don't know why, but from the first moment I saw the droppings, it was just like this hardness in my stomach, you know, like it just crystallized. I couldn't, I couldn't eat. I couldn't, oh, I couldn't focus on it. And it happened that that very afternoon, my daughter came to bring her dog who I was taking care of. And she calmed me somewhat, but there was something, there was like an inner terror that I can't even exactly describe to you where some people say, oh, just put out traps, you know, or, oh, it'll be fine. You know, just do this, just do that. No, it was beyond that for me. And so immediately I, I called the landlord and he came and he, he did certain things. He put out traps, he, he tried filling holes and doing the things that need to be done, but nothing was working. So every morning I would wake up to a new horror story of things scattered off my counters, food in my fruit bowl being eaten into, and it was just, it was growing. And the more I thought about it, the more I focused on it, the more I talked about it, the greater my fear was growing and the less ability I seemed to have to have my mind be at my immediate disposal. You know, it was like the focus got to the point where I was dreaming about it at night I had canker sores like everywhere in my mouth. I mean, it, it became so physical. Muscles were tensing and, and um, cramping. And I, I hope some of you who are listening to this can relate to what I'm talking about. Fear is not just something that happens in your mind. It can become very physical and very debilitating. And even though I knew intellectually and have told clients a million times, whatever you focus on, you feed energy to, and whatever you feed energy to grows. I knew it intellectually, but I still was caught up in the fear. And it just happened that recently I was talking to a client and I was saying, I just gave you intellectual information and I understand that sometimes that doesn't create change because it's a mind process, it's a frontal cortex process. And fear lives in the amygdala, part of your reptilian brain and in your emotions. And so, so often when we're afraid, people will say, well, don't be afraid, you know, or, oh, you shouldn't be afraid of that. It's only blah, blah, blah. I mean, I have had people in the last couple of days say to me, oh, don't move. You, there's nothing out there. You won't find another place. You know, just deal with it. It'll be fine. You know, some bait, rat bait or whatever, you know, it's going to transform the situation. And so that brought other levels of fear. Like then came in, oh my God, well, what if I can't find a place to live? What if there is nothing available out there? And so yesterday I hit a kind of a climax and thank God I had a dear friend with me because I might have gotten so weighted down with the fear that I was creating and that other people were bringing to me that I might not have been able to find a way out. But because I could turn to my friend Jeannie, who has been my rescue wagon during all of this and been there for me every day, and I said to her, I just heard something really fearful. I'm getting caught up in it. I'm not sure I can get out of this by myself. There she was to help me process and remember your reality is not created by somebody else's experience. You create your reality. And if you are sure and you are clear that something beautiful and perfect and a great solution can come forward 
and you believe that and you get out of the way by clearing the negative vibration, the low vibrations of your fear and your doubt, then that amazing thing can flow into you. And you may have to seek out a friend like I did, because sometimes we can't shake it on our own. Sometimes it's just too big to shake on our own. And that's okay. That doesn't mean you're weak. That doesn't mean you're not evolved. It just means you're human. And being fearful is part of being human because it's part of what's helped us survive, right? You know, we need to be appropriately fearful at times so that we can do what we need to do to change a situation and survive. So if you've known fear, don't have shame about it. Just know that we need to face it. We need action. We need to be proactive. We need to move toward it and through it. And my guest, that we are going to be meeting in the next segment. She's someone who helps people move toward it and through it and get to the other side. And that's the goal, guys. That's what we want to do. So if you're feeling stuck or if you're hearing too many negative things from the people around you, stop listening to those negative things. And remember, your reality has nothing to do with what's happened to other people. You can create it to be the way you want it to be. I recently saw a movie about Nelson Mandela, and I thought to myself, my God, all those years when he was in prison, all those years when he was in the darkest of the dark, he could have gotten so caught up in the misery of that moment. But he saw his future. He saw what he was meant to do and meant to become. And somehow he rose above the fear of that present moment. And that's what we're gonna to explore today because that's what we need to do. That will get us to the other side. All right, so stay with me because in my next segment, I'm gonna be introducing you to JJ Joshua and she's gonna help us to learn some ways to get through it and get to the other side. We'll be right back. Okay, my live stream viewers, you know that we're not really going to a break. So I'm just going to reset my time clock here and grab this bio and my eyes and we'll get going. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio here with Paula Shaw. I am very happy to have you with me in this segment because I have someone really special who I've done work with in my own life that I am very excited to introduce you to. JJ Joshua left a deeply fulfilling 18 year corporate career in sales training and development within Fortune 500 companies in 1996. And she began a coaching career where she does some amazing work with people. In fact, her broad base of corporate and, and life experience gave her unique, a unique strategy of coaching that provides what one client called a profound yet practical spiritual perspective where the rubber meets the road. While she primarily works with women in midlife who are seeking to move from self-sabotage to self and self-doubt to an inner experience of personal power, her client base does include people of all ages and all genders. So please help me welcome JJ Joshua. JJ, please join us. I am so tickled to introduce you to my listeners. Thank you, Paula. And hello to everybody who's listening. It's wonderful to be. We are going to have so much fun with the fear topic. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> and that's probably, that may be a sentence no one has ever uttered before in the history of <laughs> mankind. <laughs> so JJ, you heard what I was saying about fear, this, this idea that it's the mind killer. And I shared some of my own experience <clears throat> in truly having it kill my mind temporarily at moments in the last few weeks. You've worked with a lot of people over the years that you've done your counseling and, and uh, coaching. 
tell me a little bit how you feel about fear and, and what, what kinds of things help people when they're fearful in your experience. Well, first of all, your example, your example, Paula, of an infestation of rats is a perfect metaphor for what fear does to our brain. <laughs> it eats us alive inside. It is a perfect metaphor. I'm so sorry you had to go through that, but it is exactly what happens. So I want to talk about first that there's, there's literally two kinds of fear. Okay. And the one you are experiencing is you, you talked about the reptilian brain. Mm -hmm. I call that the lizard brain and I call mine Lizzie. She's got a name <laughs> and I talk to her. I'm like, calm I down, that. Lizzie, everything's okay. <laughs> so the lizard brain is real. I'm gonna say real fear that is in, it's in our systems mm -hmm. so that we can follow the first law of nature, which is have lunch, don't be lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so that's why Lizzie's there. She's trying to keep us alive. Yes, and, exactly. and that's why yours got so activated, sweetie. Past lives or whatever possible. But I, you, Lizzie was like, these guys here could hurt me. Mm -hmm. you, we need our lizard brain to let us know when the bear is about to eat. You know, we mm -hmm. need to know this. So fear number one is hardwired. And that has obviously it's worked really well for humans because we now have 7.6 billion people here. <laughs> We've survived, right? We figured the rats out. have not taken over yet. Mm -hmm. However, fear number two is the fake fear, the one we may got, the lions and tigers and bears fear, right? The psychological right. fear that's often triggered by fear number one or uncertainty or unexpected. Um, I worked with a client years ago that had a severe depression issue. And when we traced the energy back, we found that it was uh, geared to his, when he was in the womb, in his mother's womb, mm -hmm. she had an extreme startle. And that startle really? landed on his lizard brain and emanated through his whole life until wow. we could energetically shift it. So that's a real deal too. Mm -hmm. So I want to teach everybody um, on my Thoughtful Thursday video blogs, I often give very short tips on how you can fold this in. And two weeks ago, I did one on the seven second attitude adjuster. Ooh. And this deals with, it, it's addressing Lizzie, it's addressing that lizard brain. Mm -hmm. And it's by using a posture, arms up, arms up now, come on girl, Paula, that like you're crossing the victory line mm -hmm. and put a smile on your face, okay? It's okay. a posture that takes less than seven seconds. Now, do you notice a change already? Yes. 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 It takes literally, yes. okay, we can put our arms down now. Now, what happens is when we put a smile on our face, even if it's a fake smile, mm -hmm. and we put our arms in a powerful position, like you're bigger than the bear, mm -hmm. you yeah. get happy hormones going instead of the fight or flight hormones. So this really is fear in, in the beginning at the trigger. Mm -hmm. It's a hormonal issue. Yes. So we can let the hormones run us down or we can do something to stop. You have to stop. And another really little one fun little tip I want to teach you all. And this goes for uh, like food cravings. Mm -hmm. This goes for any kind of negative thinking when your head gets running off, you know, mm -hmm. is this simple thing. Clap your hands three times and say, stop it, drop it. Stop it, drop it. Stop it, drop it. <laughs> Just stop it, Lizzie. Stop that. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> you got you got to be firm with that little lizard in there. It's either yeah. Lyle or Lizzie, whatever. You've got to be firm with it. And when we clap our hands, it actually wakes your nervous system up. Mm -hmm. You will feel that. You can kind of feel it going yeah. down the back of your spine. And when we say the word stop, we are programmed from our little puppy hoods to listen to the word stop, right? Mm -hmm. The authority says when you right. hear the word stop, your whole brain all parts of your brain will pay attention right. so now you have become your own authority and you've clapped mm -hmm. and you said stop it drop it and you might need to do that a couple times before lizzie chills out but that intervention it's like a neurological and nervous system intervention when fear starts to take over does that you make sense what i love about that too is you know, we can get going in that, what I call the downward spiral. Yeah. And, and sometimes people do it with words. Sometimes they do it with what they're visualizing, right? You know, and the brain doesn't know the difference between what we visualize and what we're actually experiencing because it thinks in pictures. 
But when that spiral gets going, it can take on a life of its own and it can grow and expand. Or if we do this, I love the clap, clap, clap that you do because that creates a pattern interrupt. That's right. And we got to create, interrupt the pattern or we just keep rolling down that downward spiral. So that's exactly right. We have to do a pattern interrupt. Otherwise, the train just goes right on down that fear track and mm -hmm. it could stay there for not only weeks, but can stay there for half a lifetime where people are stuck I, on the fear train. Oh. And the other thing that like one of my shamans years ago when I was studying with a shaman, she kind of woke me up when she said, you know, one of the primary addictions to for humans is victimhood. Ah, oh, wow. The idea of being a victim mm -hmm. and to be on the blame train or the victim train, you, in order to get on the different track where you're empowered, you're running your life, mm -hmm. you have to do an interrupt. So the first step is to do it physically. So the clapping, mm -hmm. the arms up, another amazing way to change your uh, biochemical is your biochemical, you know, all those little things that are going around in your brain right. is run your hands and wrists under the coldest water you can find for about no kidding. I've yes. never heard that. I love tips, life hacks that are free. You yes. can do them 24 hours, seven yeah. and they work. So that is the first step with any kind of fear. The number one fear or the imagined fear mm -hmm. is to do a physiological interrupt. Yes. First. So cold water, uh, motion, running, mm -hmm. and and not obsessing about it, not talking about it. Totally. You know, just because like as I was saying in the very first segment, whatever we focus on, we are feeding energy to, and whatever right. we feed energy to grows. And most of us are growing what we don't want because we're focusing on the negative, right? We're focusing on what we fear rather than what we want to create. Exactly. And that's not you know that's miscreating and we do it by default because we just don't realize i mean you know it's been interesting to me jj especially since we've just gone through a whole election season to see how many people are really focusing on what they don't want almost as though it's a protective mechanism to talk about it and talk about it and talk about it you know, and, and I do realize that sometimes we have to talk about what we fear because we got to get it out and not bottle it up. But there's kind of a fine line, isn't there, you know, between talking about it, getting it out and dwelling on it and energizing it, right? And growing it. Absolutely. And I do think that this is a cultural habit. And I'm not just talking about Americans. I think we are taught that we are like, just think about it. If you go to a cocktail party and you're hanging around a lot of people, what do people usually start talking about? Their problems, right? right? They're not talking about their victories. We are trained this way. So if we want to have a different kind of life experience, we've got to retrain ourselves mm -hmm. completely. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. you know, where you put your focus is first, you've got to overcome that biology and then you have to have a plan. Then you need to, what, what can I put in place right now to shift the energy? There's four levels that we need to work on. You know this. And you um, know what? I want to stop you right there because I, this is going to be really important. And okay. I want to do it right after we take this break. But before we do, you mentioned your Thursday videos, the little tips that you give every Thursday. Let's give everybody the uh, website where they can find your stuff. Great. That's at uh, jj4forinsight.com. jj4insight.com. And there's a little tab that says video blogs. And every Thursday, Perfect. Thoughtful Thursday pops up there. And you can listen to all of them and have a good time. And they're all short. They're so that you can immediately apply something yes. in your life to make it better and stronger. Love it. All right. And after this break, we'll come back to those four things you were just about to share with us. We will be right back. All right, and we're not really going to a break, JJ, so we're just going to start again. <laughs> Great. All right. <clears throat> Welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. My guest today is an amazing woman. Her name is JJ Joshua. She is a coach, 
of a different color, so to speak. <laughs> she does a very interesting and wonderfully uh, life-changing kind of coaching. She's a spiritual coach. And we're talking today about fear. And I'm calling this show, Fear is the Mind Killer. So in our last segment, we were just talking about how we can get caught up in a spiral of thinking negatively and fearfully. And JJ was just saying that the first thing we have to do is a physiological interrupt, like clapping our hands and saying, stop it, drop it. Or we need to move our bodies, whether it's a power stance or it's kick, kicking that bag that you've got in your garage for your boxing yes. or getting on your bike or going for a run, some kind of physiological interrupt, pattern interrupt. And you were just about to talk about JJ. What do we do next? What do we do next? And I also want to remind everybody about that technique of running your arms and wrists under cold oh, water. Cold water, that was And that one. is really helpful if you get really mad. You know, you're in a working environment and somebody really makes you mad. Uh, it's amazing that how that you can get that anger out and by just running cold water for at least two minutes on the wrists and hands. So it's so, a, a literal cool down. It's exactly, <laughs> it's a literal cool down. Chill out. Chill out. <laughs> the bumper sticker, chill out. I you love can it. Do this. So, you know, the whole thing that we're talking about here is stepping up to a higher level of self-awareness. So I, I tell my clients, if you have even the slightest bit of disturbance, you know, you're upset, you're sad, you're depressed, or you're like really fared, that's not where we want to live. So as soon as you notice even the slightest disturbance, and sometimes it shows up as a judgmental mind, you know, mm. judging somebody else or yourself, you want to do an interrupt. So I've developed a four-step transformation process mm. that takes 10 minutes or less. And you can also, if you go to ask for the free gift on my website, mm -hmm. you will get this fabulous PDF of the directions and Perfect. all the research behind it. And actually you'll get two. So you get about six pages of help on how to transcend emotional triggers, any kind. Oh, but um, great. This came in a situation kind of like yours, not with the rats, but there was something else going on in my, my life about two years ago that I just couldn't get my center back. You know, all the tools I had and I was still running on that fear train. Yeah. So I literally prayed for help. There's got to be something and I don't have time to go to a therapist right now. So what? <laughs> and I, I believe in this, uh, the idea that if you ask the universe a very specific question, and if you're ready for the answer, it will come. Mm -hmm. And so I got it. This four steps is not the four steps that I invented. I compiled them from other people's work mm -hmm. and history. So the first one is just ask for a higher power to help you. My entire coaching practice is built on Einstein's quote. You cannot solve a problem from the same mind that mm -hmm. created it. I love that. Yes. I mean, it's, that's the whole game, right? So if you're on the fear train, this is not the life you want people, <laughs> and, but you have to get on another train track. Right. And so asking a higher power or even your higher self, that is that transcendent self that's never known fear or trauma and it has wisdom and it has creativity. So just take a moment to say, you know, yo, help, <laughs> just, just asking for the higher wisdom to enter into this brain right now. Okay. The second thing is it comes from psychology. If you just sit in your feelings and look, as you said from Dune, if you face your fear and you sit with it, and I ask people to set a timer for not more than five minutes, mm -hmm. you just sit with the fear, the feelings, whatever they are, and you don't drink any water, you just sit in them, just sit them and observe them like a great meditator, right? You just watch them go by like a ticker mm -hmm. tape. You don't judge them, you don't engage them and you don't make more stories about them. You're just like, oh, there that one goes and there's that one go. You just mm. sit with it for five minutes. Almost like watching a movie. Just exactly, exactly. Okay. Watching a movie, but you're not the star. You have somebody else out there, right? Okay. You're just watching this movie. But because what we don't face gets suppressed mm -hmm. and then we'll come back later in a much uglier form. So we want to look at it. But literally, you guys, five minutes, oftentimes eight is all you need to just sit with a feeling 
and you can survive it. Five minutes of being with those really uncomfortable feelings and set your timer. Really, that also is a safety factor. It tells Lizzie, Lizzie right. back there, right? Hey, we can do this. This is five minutes. Now, the next step, step three, is the physical again. And this comes from the fabulous work from the book, Waking the Tiger about trauma. And you spend the next five minutes or three shaking your body. Doing the hokey pokey and shaking it all about. <laughs> shaking actually for mammals is an essential part. I'm shaking, for those of you just listening, I'm shaking my hands, shake your booty. <laughs> shaking the body moves trauma out. Just you know moving on down the road. Yesterday I mentioned that I had to go seek help from my friend Jeannie to, and she said, let's go and shake it out. And we did, we stood and we yes. shook all over. <laughs> and it's so amazing. Put yeah. on some music. Shake it all about, I mean, literally every, your tongue, your neck, shake okay. for at least three minutes. Shake it out. Okay. Now, the last step comes from the brilliant work of Amy Cuddy, C-U-D-D-Y. You can find her TED Talk about the power posture, which we were talking about earlier, where if you mm -hmm. just hold your arms up or put right. them on your hips yes. or widen your stance and you hold it for two minutes, it literally causes a hormonal change from the fight or flight to the I got this hormones, literally from mm, cortisol like to testosterone. Now, what a life hack is that? Thank you, Amy Cuddy. So <laughs> if you put all these four together, when you're in the middle of an intense activation or disturbance, yes. now something as intense as what you went through, sweetie, you may have to do it two or three times. Mm -hmm. And I also tell for people that are experiencing depression, if you start your day this way, if you do yes. this proactively, you will get more aliveness in your experience by shaking off the morning gloom and just being with it and then yes. rocking and rolling with it. So it's let's, so simple. Let's review those four steps. So the first one was calling in higher help. Mm -hmm. right? And the second one was sit down for five ah, minutes and feel and the feels. Do. Beautiful Feel the feels. Then shake it off. Shake it, baby. A lesson learned from dogs and ducks. <laughs> right. That's great. You know, I remember in Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth, where he talks about when the two ducks come together, if they bump into each other, you know, they just go in a different direction, shake it off. You don't see a duck going, what was that about? <laughs> Who do you think he is? I don't know why he did that to me. You know, they just shake it off. So... Okay, we shake it off. And then the last thing is? Is the power stance that Amy, Amy Cuddy gave us. And a full two minutes. I always set my timer for two minutes and two seconds. And if you can do that outside, fresh air, you will get a state change. So now you are in control of your life instead of the hormones from Lizzie the lizard. You get your power back and then you make a plan. Yeah, it's that one, simple. I think one of the things a lot of people don't realize too, JJ, that I love about what you just said is that we, we have power. We don't have power over what goes on out there, but we have power over how we respond to it. And if we stay stuck, if we just keep dwelling on it or stay stuck in our fear and not take these steps that you just discussed, then it is going to grow. It is going to overtake us. But we, we're always at choice. We're always at choice. And so I really hope our listeners wrote down those four things you just talked about because boom, 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 there's your, your steps to actually be a choice to say, wow, this is not where I want to be. This is not where I want to live. And I want to be somewhere else. And it isn't necessarily normal and natural for humans to always be in a happy state. I recently learned some very shocking information to me. I interviewed a man named Dawson Church, who's just written a book called Bliss Brain, based on a lot of great research. And Dawson was saying that the default mode of the brain is not joy, it's worry. So if you're not focused on a task, your brain goes to worry because of exactly what you said in the beginning, survival. You know, yeah. if we didn't anticipate what could go wrong and hurt us, we probably wouldn't still be on this planet. 
So I, that to me was pretty shocking information because I kind of thought, well, if you're a positive person mm -hmm. and your brain just relaxes and thinks about positive things. No, we have to work at that piece because it's going against the automatic default mode of the brain. That is so exactly true. So what you just said is we have to work it. And I want to add another word to that. We need to own it. Mm, we need to it. own the responsibility for being on the love train instead of the fear train. We've got yes. to own it every day. So if yes. you start your day with an intention statement, I like to look in the mirror every day and greet myself and say, today I'm going to let love lead all my thoughts, words, and deeds. We have to own that responsibility because the default thing is to go to fear yep. and worry that you know and there's another thing that can happen is you can actually get addicted to fear hormones we can oh, get that addicted. is a great place for us to take a quick pause while we go to a break and when we come back in our last segment let's talk a little bit about being addicted to fear hormones we'll be all right, right back. <laughs> all right Ooh, i'm excited jj <laughs> are you ready I'm ready. All right. Well, welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw and my guest today, JJ Joshua, who is a very unique kind of coach. And she is sharing some amazing experiences and tools with us today in how to cope with our fear. We're calling this show Fear is the Mind Killer. And I don't think any of us really want our minds killed <laughs> by fear. So JJ, you were just about to talk a bit about how we can actually get addicted to fear. Tell us more about that. Well, we can get addicted to any repetitive thought. Mm -hmm. And every thought delivers to, it, to our bodies a biochemical cocktail that matches the energy of that thought. But as you just said, and particularly in 2020 here, folks, and in the election, we can literally have so much fear hormone running that our lizard brain thinks, well, that's, that's the biochemical cocktail that's keeping me alive because I am still alive. Yes. So that is just important information to know that anything you repetitively think will eventually create a biochemical cocktail to addict you. So this is Change It Up Radio, and I just want to insert one fun thing that you can do to make yourself more change friendly with regard to fear or anything else, is to do something different every day in your regular routine. For example, hmm. if you start brushing your teeth on the right side, switch to the left side. Ah. Yeah. If you put your pants on, you know, one foot first, change it up. When becoming change friendly with tiny little things keeps that keeps you from getting addicted to the rut of old thinking mm -hmm. and setting your strong intention at the beginning of every day. Um, I Can I share a, a quote that I'd like to read from Eckhart Tolle real quick, Absolutely. short one? And it's so good, I didn't want to mess it up, so I, so I wrote it down. Uh -huh. When you become comfortable with uncertainty, so uncertainty right now is the big deal. Oh, man. It's the really. theme song of my life in the last few weeks, for sure. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so when we become comfortable with uncertainty, infinite possibilities open up your, in your life. Oh, wow. It means that fear is no longer the dominant factor in what you do mm -hmm. and no longer prevents you from taking actions to initiate that change. If uncertainty is unacceptable to you, it turns into fear. Say that last sentence again. If that uncertainty, if uncertainty mm -hmm. is unacceptable to your gestalt of your attitude, mm -hmm. it will automatically turn to fear. Wow. So what, do, what can we do about that? Again, go, you know, the tagline to my practice is intentional living. To start your day, maybe, you know, I read this four years ago, this quote, and I went, okay, I need to add that to my life intentions that I'm going to become comfortable with uncertainty. Yes. And I've had a lot of practice on that in most of my life, but particularly in the last five years mm -hmm. to be, to just, because everything is uncertain, right? Absolutely. So we might as well go with it. <laughs> go with the flow. I've been dragged kicking and screaming to coming to that awareness, but yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, most of life is uncertain. So, well, really, literally, everything is uncertain. And we can do hard things. We can set an intention 
to show up with life the way it is. We kind of, I wish I just had, you know, a business plan for my life. I wish this would happen or this would happen. Well, get over it, ladies and gentlemen, that's not happening. (laughs) And so to go with the flow, I had an instant this weekend, I actually witnessed salmon swimming upstream to their swimming their their swimming oh my river. goodness Ooh, i live I in the chills. pacific northwest wow thousands of them chum salmon doing this really hard thing <laughs> and going upstream they don't know that when they get there to their spawning grounds they're going to die but we do we know that when we get there that's the end mm-hmm. we're all doing hard things physically emotionally mentally and spiritually when you're wanting to strengthen yourself Figure out, you know, how you can break the spell physically, emotionally, and mentally, so that you can become comfortable with what is, and always call upon that transcendent self for that higher energy mm-hmm. to help you deal with uncertainty and yes. embrace it yes. as you go along, as you're swimming upstream. <laughs> and I loved what you said again. I love everything you say, JJ, but that idea that, you know. I think so many people think the world has to change for them to feel okay about things, for them to be at peace, for them to be at joy. But we can't control the world. You know, the stream is there, whether we like it or not, and we're going to have to swim up it, at least at certain points in life. But if we become changed, if we become comfortable, like I love the quote, if we can get comfortable with uncertainty... It's like I often say at the beginning of this show, the one thing we can count on in life is a change is going to come. If you like where you are, change is going to come. If you don't like where you are, change is going to come. And so we need to be, we need to get where you just suggested we go, which is to become comfortable with that reality. We can't control things. We just can't. There's a saying I love that is, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. In the rain. I love that. I just got chills when you said that. It's so true. We are tasked with the, um, we are given the gift to choose. And it really, like you said earlier, you can choose to go down fear or you can choose to step up to love. We have that choice. Um, and just reminding ourselves that we do have that power. Mm-hmm. We have that amazing power. Yeah. And, and wow, what a great statement. You know, I think when we are in, in the midst of fear, the, the thing that is most strong is we feel powerless. Yes. And that's what I love about what you've taught us today between the power stance and the stop it, drop it, and all that. They're empowering, right? They're saying you don't have to live as victim. You can do something and change that state. That's right. And you make sure you're addressing the four levels, your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual levels. Whenever you're trying to make any kind of change, if it's just in the moment to get through the day yep. or a major life change trajectory, get all four of those activated for you to have success in your yes. change. Yes. And another just quick thing, look at the changes, look at the hard things that you have done and, and take an inventory of the successes that have come out of your hardest and darkest times and know what they are and apply them again. Oh, that is so, that's so good. And I think that's a great reminder. You know, JJ, once I went to a a retreat where the whole thing was that this, uh, it was a Catholic, at a Catholic um, retreat center. And the priest had us make a list of some of the most traumatic experiences we had had in our lives. And then on the other side, list the outcome, what finally happened. And then, and so it was interesting because as you're listing that thing, like, you know, I found out my husband cheated on me or I lost my job or, you know, things that people dread. Then you saw, wow, I ended up in a better place. You know, like I hope to report back within the month that (laughs) the rats drove me out of that place because there was this amazing place and new life experiences waiting for me. Now, did I want the change? Did I, would I ever have ordered it this way? (laughs) (laughs) Not in my wildest dreams. Absolutely not. But, but it was thrust upon me. 
And I think that's a point that, you know, we, we have to look at as humans. Sometimes change is thrust upon you, whether that comes through a death or a job loss or a tsunami or a hurricane or whatever it is. And, and oftentimes that change is thrust upon us. We resist or we're upset or we're angry or we go victim. But I think so much of what I have learned from you today is don't go there. Step into your power, you know, uh, change it. Change it physiologically first, then change it in your thinking. Emotionally. Mm-hmm. And emotions, right. And now you have an opportunity for something productive and growthful to happen. Is that, is that correct? That is the bottom line. You have the power. You've had the power all along, Dorothy. (laughs) (laughs) Click those heels together and choose a whole different track. (laughs) Oh, JJ, I so love that. And I so love you. And I love everything you taught us today. And I'm so grateful to you for being on my show. And I want you to come back because there are many, many things that we can talk about. And to everybody out there who may be dealing with fear right now for a variety of reasons, listen to this show again, use the tools that JJ has shared with us. Remember that you're in the power seat. All you need to do may begin with something as simple as stop it, drop drop it. it. And I want to thank everybody, all of our listeners for listening to us. And remember, you can hear us on AM 1170 and FM 96.1 in San Diego on Sunday evenings at nine o'clock. We are on every major podcast platform, including Podopolo, which is the newest, latest, greatest podcast platform that has all kinds of things going for it. So if you haven't downloaded Podopolo, be sure you do that. And remember, you can always hear past shows on changeitupradio.com. And we're on all the podcast platforms, including iHeartRadio and Blog Talk Radio. So finding us is as simple as saying, Alexa, change it up radio or Siri, (laughs) change it up radio. Thank you, Paula, so much. I love being with you and blessings to all of you out there in all of your empowered changes. Beautiful. And thank you, JJ, for blessing all of us. All right. We'll see you all again next week. Until then, be safe. Be safe.